Oh my goodness, it is finally happening. Despite rumors of a far-off launch at the end of November, SpaceX just confirmed that Starship's Flight 5 could be happening as soon as this weekend. And that's not all. The company also announced they're planning an epic catch of the rocket using the chopsticks. Let's get into it now on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for being here with us. So October 8th, we got the latest updates and changes from SpaceX's website. The essential schedule for Flight 5 got posted, including the countdown and detailed timeline. Now, typically, as we've seen in previous launches, when SpaceX shares a schedule like that, it means they want to give space enthusiasts like us a clear view of the mission timeline right before the launch takes place shortly afterward. In the update on their website and social media platform X, SpaceX declared Starship's fifth flight test is preparing to launch as soon as October 13th, pending regulatory approval. Now, let's not get too caught up in the FAA approval part, because Elon's confidence leaves little room for doubt. He stated this on X, launch could be as soon as Sunday. They're fully preparing everything for Starship's fifth flight, and October 13th can't get here soon enough. Do you believe in this timeline? Comment yes if you agree, or no if you don't, and share your reasons down there in the comments, too. Now, to be honest, until the readiness is confirmed by both SpaceX and its leader, the challenge still lies in the pending regulatory approval, and the FAA is the agency that's in charge of giving that. In fact, the FAA has previously stated that the launch license would not be issued by the end of next month, causing confusion since other indicators like regulatory filings and other flight preparations suggest that SpaceX could be ready to launch as early as mid-October. The FAA's firm stance citing safety, environmental, and licensing regs directly contradicts the launch timeline that was hinted at by SpaceX. So, the question is now, why is SpaceX so confident in announcing this early launch date? I'm certain that they probably know something that we don't, but let's consider a few possibilities. First, SpaceX could be anticipating a change in the FAA's stance, allowing for an earlier launch date than originally projected. The FAA's current statements could merely reflect the situation as it stands now, leaving room for adjustments, meaning that SpaceX addresses FAA's concerns like the sonic booms generated by the Super Heavy's return for Mechazilla's rocket-catching maneuver, which required an additional 60 days of review since September, the launch could be brought forward. Another possibility fueling SpaceX's strong assertion about Flight 5 happening this weekend could be NASA getting involved. As a major partner in Starship's program, especially through Artemis missions, NASA might have intervened to expedite the licensing process, potentially bypassing the FAA's usual procedures. In theory, NASA has the authority to grant launch licenses, which would explain SpaceX's optimistic outlook. A third, more concerning possibility is that SpaceX might be pushing the legal envelope with pre-launch activities without the FAA's approval. While that's just speculation, this approach could lead to a bit of a legal conflict with the FAA if SpaceX goes ahead without getting permission. However, I don't think that's very likely. SpaceX is not trying to violate any U.S. government regulations right now. It'd be like tying their own hands and surrendering to the government. Plus, if tensions between SpaceX and the FAA escalate, it could complicate future launches even more. So keeping in mind, though Elon's been quite vocal in his public support for Donald Trump and his opposition to the current government, it's highly unlikely that this would result in actions that cross legal boundaries. That's especially true with the strong leadership of Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's powerful and level-headed COO. Shotwell, who's very skilled in negotiations, has always backed Elon's plays in major projects and often takes charge in steering the company's direction. In a September conference before the U.S. House, Shotwell claimed that SpaceX was working with dozens of regulatory bodies to do a Starship launch, which naturally means complying with dozens, if not hundreds, of regulations. Confidently adding that she's not afraid of regulations, demonstrating her firm resolve and confidence in the operational process of Starship when addressing official concerns. For this reason, I believe SpaceX won't intentionally push beyond the limits of government regulations. Instead, they're likely to make meticulous preparations for a legit launch. We've talked about several possibilities, but in the end, there's about a 90% chance of the Starship Flight 5 launch happening as planned. I'm sure most of you share the hope that the administrative process moves quickly because we are all eager to see that shining beast take to the sky. Of course, in this scenario, we can't overlook the most exciting aspect of the Flight 5 launch, catching the Super Heavy using the chopsticks. This was confirmed by Elon himself when someone asked him whether Mechazil would actually get used for the catch. Responding on X, he said, yes, if all systems are working well. Also, on October 8th, SpaceX carried out a double water deluge test, possibly simulating two crucial phases of the flight, one for the launch and another for the landing of the booster. The sheer amount of water unleashed was insane, further solidifying the likelihood of successfully catching Super Heavy. 
The flight profile has been updated with a new countdown and timeline for Starship Flight 5. With the success of Starship's fourth flight, SpaceX seems to have retained much of the original schedule. However, the timeline for Starship's actions in Flight 5 is a bit faster compared to Flight 4, possibly because the company aims to increase the success rate for the mission, with the new goal of attempting to catch the booster with Megazel. This process will happen about 6 minutes and 33 seconds after launch, when the first stage, Booster 12, reignites its engines to slow descent. After this, two possibilities arise. At 6 minutes and 50 seconds, Super Heavy lands in the ocean if SpaceX opts out of the catch attempt, or at 6 minutes and 56 seconds, if conditions are optimal, the rocket shuts down its burn and the catch will proceed. That's an incredible plan by SpaceX. With these two well-defined scenarios, there's no reason the launch would pose a risk to land-based facilities. You remember Elon's outdoor presentation earlier this year back in April? He revealed Super Heavy be equipped with a new system capable of identifying any hazards along its descent path. If something goes wrong during the landing that makes the catch dangerous, the rocket could automatically reroute for a soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico. This is entirely feasible. Given Elon's AI company, artificial intelligence could easily handle a task like that. That said, concerns about risks are not unfounded. Musk confirmed in a comment, exactly, the catch attempt hinges on several factors. Both the booster and tower must have fully functional systems, underscoring the complexity and precision of the maneuver. Plus, the flight director must manually approve the catch, adding a layer of human decision-making. This approval must be given before the completion of the boost-back burn, highlighting the narrow timing window involved. Automated health checks are essential to this process, continuously monitoring both the booster and the tower to ensure all parameters are within safe limits for a successful catch attempt. This reliance on advanced automated systems highlights the cutting-edge tech and software integration required for such a bold recovery method. Fortunately, SpaceX has got a backup plan in case the catch doesn't happen. If conditions are unsuitable or the manual approval isn't given in time, the booster defaults to a recovery method similar to the one used during the fourth launch. SpaceX is pushing the boundaries of engineering while maintaining a safety-first mindset. This approach allows them to test cutting-edge techniques without compromising the mission's overall success or the integrity of their equipment. SpaceX's plan to catch the Starship Super Heavy booster with a launch tower's chopsticks is a groundbreaking strategy that aims to push the limits of reusables. Unlike traditional recovery methods where rockets either landed on drone ships at sea or touched down on land-based pads, this ambitious method seeks to eliminate the need for landing legs altogether. The booster will be caught mid-descent by massive mechanical arms mounted on the launch tower, that will then grip the rocket and stabilize it as it returns to the launch site. If this technique is successful, it has the potential to revolutionize rocket turnaround times. By catching the booster directly at the launch site, SpaceX could reduce the time it takes to refurb and prep it for the next mission. Traditional recovery methods require rockets get transported back to the launch facility after landing, whether from remote landing zones or offshore platforms. This process can add days or even weeks to the time between launches, slowing down the goals of SpaceX's rapid reuse. The chopsticks could allow for almost immediate refurbishment, enabling the booster to get relaunched within hours or days rather than weeks. Moreover, this method could drastically reduce refurb costs. One of the most expensive aspects of a rocket recovery is refurbishing the landing legs, which experience significant wear and tear during touchdown. This reduction in mechanical complexity could lead to cost savings not just in the refurbishment phase, but also in the construction of the rockets themselves. Catching the booster also minimizes exposure to the harsh sea conditions, which can cause saltwater corrosion and structural damage, further reducing the wear and tear on the rocket. This innovative approach emphasizes SpaceX's commitment to making spaceflight more cost-effective, reusable, and frequent. By lowering the costs associated with rocket recovery and reducing downtime, the company could dramatically increase its launch cadence, further cementing its position as a leader in the space industry. And that's all for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.